Welcome to the Rare History Channel. The Banano Mystique, 14 Stunning Facts About the Legendary Mafia Boss Joseph Charles Bonanno, also known as Joe Bananas, was a notorious Sicilian-American mobster who became the head of one of the infamous five families in New York City. His life was rife with power, controversy, and intrigue. Here are 14 of the most interesting and lesser-known facts about Joseph Bonanno. Fact number one. Early years in the mafia, a lesson in survival. Joseph Bonanno, born on January 18, 1905, in the picturesque Sicilian town of Castellamare del Golfo, had a connection to the mafia from his early life. His family's position in the local community provided him exposure to the world of organized crime, and his experiences in Sicily would come to shape his understanding and approach to the mafia after immigrating to the United States. By the time the Castellamarese War broke out in New York in the 1930s, Bonanno was well prepared, using the strategic thinking and survival instincts he developed in his earlier years to navigate this brutal power struggle among rival mafia factions. Number 2. Immigration to America, the New Arena To escape the violence and threat to his life due to the ongoing mafia war in Sicily, 19-year-old Bonanno was sent to the United States in 1924. He landed in Brooklyn, New York, a place that would provide the backdrop for his rise to power. Within a few years of his arrival, Bonanno demonstrated an uncanny ability to navigate the dangerous underworld, swiftly ascending the ranks of the local mafia and gaining a reputation for his audacity and tactical prowess. Number 3. The Youngest Mafia Boss, A New Era. In 1931, at the age of just 26, Joseph Bonanno became one of the youngest bosses of the five families following the assassination of his mentor, Salvatore Maranzano. His appointment as head of the Bonanno crime family marked a significant shift in the mafia's power structure, ushering in a new era of younger, more ambitious leadership. Bonanno's reign, which would last for over three decades, was characterized by strategic alliances, ruthless power plays, and an expansion of the family's criminal activities. Number 4. Establishment of the Commission, the Mafia's Board of Directors. In a bid to maintain peace among the warring families and oversee major decisions, Bonanno helped establish the Commission, a Mafia ruling body, in 1931. The Commission served as a national board of directors for organized crime families across America. It was instrumental in promoting cooperation, mediating disputes, and enforcing discipline among the families. Bonanno's influential role in its formation demonstrated his vision for a more united and organized national crime syndicate. Number 5. The Bonanno Family Empire, a grip on multiple industries. Under Bonanno's leadership, the family's criminal empire expanded significantly across various sectors. The family's tentacles reached into construction, gaining lucrative contracts and controlling labor unions. They infiltrated the garment industry, manipulating the distribution of fabrics and finished products. Not even the food industry was spared, the family had significant interests in cheese and bread companies. This wide range of activities allowed the Bonanno family to diversify their income and maintain a steady cash flow, all while increasing their power and influence. Number 6. The Bananas War, a power struggle unleashed. In a move that would trigger his downfall, Bonanno, in the mid-1960s, plotted to assassinate several rival mafia bosses. This audacious plan backfired, igniting a violent internal conflict known as the Bananas War within his own family. Dissident factions within the family emerged, leading to deadly power struggles and the gradual weakening of Bonanno's grip on the family. Number 7. The Last Mustache Pete, The End of an Era Often referred to as the Last Mustache Pete, Bonanno represented a generation of Sicilian mafiosi who rose to power during the Prohibition era. This term was used for old guard mafiosi who adhered to traditional values of honor, loyalty, and respect, contrasting with the more ruthless and entrepreneurial attitudes of their successors. With his death, the era of the Mustache Pete's drew to a close, marking the end of a significant chapter in the history of organized crime in America. Number 8. Kidnapping and Disappearance, An Unsolved Mystery 
1964 saw Banano mysteriously disappear, a puzzling event that threw the already troubled family into further turmoil. Allegedly kidnapped by rival mobsters, Banano's sudden absence intensified the internal strife. After nearly two years, he re-emerged in May 1966, claiming that he had indeed been kidnapped. However, many viewed this story with skepticism, suspecting it was an elaborate ruse designed to avoid the escalating internal conflict. Number 9. Retirement and Succession, The Passing of the Baton Following years of bitter infighting, Bonanno retired from his role as the family boss in 1968. His retirement marked the end of a turbulent era characterized by power, ambition, and controversy. Handing over the reins to his son Salvatore Bill Bonanno, he hoped to keep the family's control within his bloodline. Despite the many hurdles, the Bonanno legacy continued, underscoring the deeply entrenched nature of the Mafia in American society. Number 10. Autobiography and TV Appearances, A Rare Glimpse into the Mafia In a surprising move in 1983, Bonanno penned an autobiography titled A Man of Honor, the autobiography of Joseph Bonanno. In it, he offered a detailed account of his life within the Mafia, providing a rare insider's perspective into this clandestine world. Bonanno also made multiple appearances on national television, including interviews on CBS's 60 Minutes and The Dick Cavett Show. These appearances, largely unprecedented for a high-ranking member of the Mafia, offered an unparalleled look into the secretive and often dangerous life of organized crime. Number 11. Escape to Arizona. After stepping down from leading the Bonanno family, Joseph moved to Tucson, Arizona in 1968 to escape the Mafia Wars in New York. Despite living in a different state, Bonanno maintained his influence in the underworld. In Arizona, Bonanno led a much quieter life but was still occasionally indicted on racketeering charges. He built a respectable facade in Arizona, being known as a businessman and a community member, all the while continuing his clandestine operations. Number 12. The Mafia Cuban Connection. An interesting but lesser known fact about Bonanno is his alleged involvement in the CIA's plot to assassinate Fidel Castro. According to some reports, the CIA had contacted Bonanno, along with other mob bosses, to assist in their plot to kill Castro. Although the CIA's involvement with the Mafia in the operation is now a known fact, whether Bonanno personally took part in it remains uncertain. This adds yet another layer of mystery and intrigue to Bonanno's storied life. Number 13. Extended Life and Natural Death, The Irony of Survival Bonanno's life was steeped in violence, yet he lived longer than most of his contemporaries. Despite alleged involvement in numerous crimes, threats from rival mafia families, and the hazardous nature of his lifestyle, Bonanno passed away of heart failure on May 11, 2002, at the ripe age of 97. His longevity, especially given his profession, stands as one of the intriguing paradoxes of his life. Number 14. Influence on Pop Culture, The Real Life Godfather Joseph Bonanno's life and exploits had a significant impact on popular culture. His life is thought to have partially inspired the character of Vito Corleone in Mario Puzo's iconic novel The Godfather. This influence illustrates how Bonanno's notoriety extended beyond the realm of organized crime, permeating popular literature and subsequently cinema, with the novel's adaptation into a successful film franchise.